Okay, we're starting last time we finished Noyach, page 54 in the Stone Chumashim. Class tonight is sponsored for Rabbi Yisem Morvich's birthday. Happy birthday. Shnas Hatzlacha, successful year. Amen. Okay, um, Pashas Lachacha, before we begin, begins the, uh, the life of Avram Avinu. The previous rabbi said, Noyach is a very depressing parsha. Talks about the flood. You know, uh, the end of the parsha begins a little bit uh, lively, you know, with Avram. But Lechacha is complete, a lively parsha. It speaks only about Avram Avinu. It also begins discussing the ten tests of Avram Avinu, or most of them. Some of them mentioned in passing before. Um, even though Terech was still alive, like we learned last week. Terech is still alive. In fact, Yitzchak was in his 50s, I think, when, when Terech died. Okay, so Terech was really alive for a long time, but the Torah finishes up with him because we want to get to the story of Avram Avinu. Now, at the beginning of Noach, the passage says, Vayem el I mean, no, I'm sorry. Eilat told us Noach, Noach ish tzaddik. Noach was a tzaddik. So the Ramban asks, the Torah should begin here, by Yerma Hashem al-Avram, Avram, how are you tzaddik? <laughs> Why doesn't he begin saying that Avram Avinu was a tzaddik? Like he says by Noach. He starts off talking about Noach, he says Noach was a righteous man. So why doesn't the Torah begin saying or that, that Avram Avinu was a righteous man? Why did, by Yerma Hashem al-Avram, Hashem says to Avram. We'll soon see the answer to that question of the Ramban. Okay, let's do this first passing that we'll discuss. There's a lot to discuss in this passing. Vim Hashem al Avram, Hashem said to Avram, Lech lecha go, me yartzecha from your land, or me melatzecha from your birthplace, or me beis avicha from your father's house, meaning from your relatives, ala adetz asher ar echo to the land I will show you. So what is Hashem telling Avram? He's not even saying, go here. He says, leave, go. I'll show you eventually where you need to go. And this is one of the tests of Avram Avinu, by the way, as Chazal tells us. Hashem says to Avram, go. We don't even know where. I mean, I, normally, the guy says, okay, pack your bags and leave. So normally, the question is, where, to where? Avram Avinu didn't question. He knew Hashem said, go, go. Where? We're worried about it later. We'll figure it out later. So what about the initial which direction... Does he have? When he does start, he, we're going to see. Google uh, map. <laughs> no, but does, does God kind of put in control his heart? Yes, at that moment, Hashem is telling him where to go. Yeah, otherwise, we, like, where would he go? But we, yeah, we'll see. Okay, now, um, there's a whole question over here, because soon the Torah is going to say that Avram Avinu was 75. And Hashem told him, Lech Lecha. A few psukim, going to say, Avram was 75 years old. The problem is, at the end of the parsha, <coughs> at the bris bein hapsarim, you know, Hashem cut the thing in half and they walked between, Hashem made a covenant with him. At that time, Avram Avinu was 70. So the obvious question is, here he's 75, later on in the parsha he's 70. So what does that mean? So many, and also, I mean, just in the order, like what happened? So many, so obviously there's a rule in Teda, a mukdum um There is no necessarily chronological order in Teda. Teda doesn't always go by chronological order of events. Teda goes by different things. Many opinions say there were two goings. There was one by Brisbane and Hapsarim, and there was one when he was 75. The second one, according to many commentators, was after the Brisbane and Hapsarim. Brisbane and Hapsarim, he was 70. Here he's 75. So it's like afterwards, and this comes after that story, okay? Now, what happens over here? <coughs> Hashem says to Avram like this, go. Where does he say go? But he says like this, Let, let's take one thing at a time. Lech l'cha. What do you mean, lech l'cha? Lech means go, l'cha means to yourself. Lech, go. What do you mean, lech l'cha for yourself? So Rashi says, it's for your benefit. If you go, 
Lech, it's lucha, it's for your benefit. Why? Here, you're not going to have any children. Well, I'm telling you to go, eventually you're going to have Yitzchak. So it's for your benefit. I'm going to make you a great nation and all that. So Hashem basically telling him that you're going to become famous. Not that Avram did it for ego. Avram had a mission in life. Avram Avinu's mission was to spread godliness in the world. It says in Hasidus that his self-sacrifice was even greater than Rabbi Akiva's. Rabbi Akiva, the Gemara says, when there was a Roman decree about not learning Torah, Rabbi Akiva was still continuing learning Torah. He was still learning Torah. So a student said to him, why are you doing this? They're going to catch you, they're going to kill you. You know, he gave the famous story with the fish in the water, in the water, I'm alive out of... But he says like this, Rabbi Akiva said, my whole life, I was looking to be able to have Mesiras Nefesh to give up my life for God. Now that I finally have the opportunity, I shouldn't be happy. Rabbi Akiva was beaming, he was happy. He said, my whole life I was waiting to do Mesiras Nefesh. Now that I have the opportunity, I shouldn't be happy. That's a very great level. But it says Avraham Avinu was even greater. Because in a certain respect, Rabbi Akiva wanted Mesidus Nefesh for his own completion, to be a complete person. He did it because he wanted to reach the ultimate level. Avraham Avinu also had Mesidus Nefesh. He had ten tests, all big, massive self-sacrifice. What was unique about Avraham Avinu? <coughs> he didn't look for it. He said, God gave me a mission. Spread belief in one God. Yeah? Whatever it takes to do, that's what I'm going to do. I need self-sacrifice. I'll do self-sacrifice. I don't need it. I won't do it. There's no me. I don't even want to be a a holy person with self-sacrifice. I'm doing it because this is what Hashem wants me to do. Whatever it takes to do, I'm going to do. So this Mesidus Nefesh of Avram Avinu in many respects, Chassidus explains, was even greater than the Mesidus Nefesh of Rabbi Kiva that did it for his personal accomplishment. But Avraham Avinu was no accomplishment. He went to what he did. Rabbi, I have one comment. Yeah. It's, it's probably better to stay alive longer. In other words, maybe not do one mitzvah, but stay alive longer so you can do many other mitzvahs. Yeah, that is a true statement. In fact, it's brought down that the Beis Yosef, the Beis of Cairo, who compiled the Shulchan Aruch that we have today was his, is his work. He was supposed to die with Mesidus Nefesh for the sanctification of God's name. For a Jew, there's no higher thing than he goes straight to Gan Eden. I mean, you're super holy. <coughs> Something happened. He lost the opportunity. But because of that, we have the Shulchan Aruch. If he would have died, al Kiddush Hashem, we wouldn't even have the Shulchan Aruch today. Okay. Another interesting point about what you just said. When Avram brought Yitzchak up, the tenth final test of Avram Avinu was taking Yitzchak up as a sacrifice, right? Now, in the movies or in the books, you see this little boy Yitzchak and his father taking him up. Okay. Yitzchak was 37 years old at the Akedah. 37. He wasn't a baby. He was a, an adult, right? At 30, Yitzchak at 37 was great, yeah? He was the one getting killed. Correct? Why is it called the test of Avram Avinu? The test of Avram Avinu, why isn't it called the test of Yitzchak? It's his first son. Huh? First son after 99 years. Can you imagine? So? But Yitzchak's getting killed, not Avram. Oh my gosh, it's your blood, it's your flesh. Yeah, but this is him. This is only a kid. So what's the answer? It's a fundamental. A lot of commentaries say this, but not only a lot of commentaries. People say this. It's easier 
to die as a Jew than to live as a Jew. What does it mean? Yitzchak was going to get killed. He's done. Finished. Avram Avinu had to live with that for the rest of his life. Living with Mesidus Nefesh is harder than dying with Mesidus Nefesh. Yitzchak was going to die on Mesidus Nefesh. Okay, he was going to be willing to kill or get killed for the sake of Hashem. Okay, now, so going back to the Ramban's question, why doesn't Hashem say anything good about Avram like he says by Noach? Noach is sadik, tamim hoyu bedereisev, you know, here, you Hashem al Avram. Say, talk a little bit about Avram, the Ramban asks. So what's the answer? The Ramban says, <coughs> because Hashem is talking to every single Jew. <coughs> this is, is talking about? To every single Jew. Oh. Avram is the father of all Jews. Hashem is saying, you don't need to be a tzaddik to be this level, what we're going to discuss soon, what Hashem asked Avram Avinu to do. You don't need to be a tzaddik. And if the Torah would have said Avram was a tzaddik and he was a holy man, people would say, okay, what do you want from me? Avram Avinu was a tzaddik, so he did what he did. You expect me to do what he did? I can't do what he did. So the Torah says, I want you to know we're not talking about Avram because he's a great man. We're talking about Avram because he was a Jew. He was the first Jew. The Yem Hashem al Avram, he was the first Jew, and therefore every Jew has the ability to do what Avram Avinu did. And every Jew has an obligation to do what Avram Avinu did. What is Hashem telling the first, like Shalom Aleichem, the first mission God is giving Avram, what is he saying to him like this? Lech Lecha May Atzacha literally means from your land. May Latzacha from your birth, birthplace, or me base of from your father's house. So the explanation, Chassidus says a very interesting explanation of the, the depth of the meaning of these words. The Gemara says, Edetz, the root of Edetz is Rots, which is the root of the word Rotson, will. Will is called Ratzin. Yehi Ratzin Mufanach, right? Ratzin means maybe you will. Yehi Ratzin, maybe you will. The Torah is saying, what's the function of a Jew? You have wills. You have desires. You have wants. Hashem says, get out of them. Lech lecha go, me artzacha, from your own wills. What you want, just get out. You will say the whole thing at the end. Get out of your own will. From your birthplace, that means from your habits. What were habits from birth? You know, from your habits. People are born with certain habits. Okay? Hashem says, get out of your habits. From your father's house. What is Avicha? Avicha is Seichel. Avicha means get out of your own Seichel. The Torah says to every Jew like this, and this is the first mission of, of Avraham Avinu, and therefore it's the first mission of every single Jew. Hashem says to every single Jew like this, Lech Lecha, go. From where should you go out of? From your own desires, your own wants, from your natural traits, from your natural habits, from your natural intellect, from your natural intelligence, and where should you go? echo to the will that I'm showing you, what I want you to do. In other words, like this. Let's speak, it's, a, it's the season now, Pesach, right? Pesach season. What is going on in Mitzrayim? I mean, we learned many times. Mitzrayim doesn't only mean Egypt. Mitzrayim comes with Mitzrayim, boundaries. Okay? There's certain boundaries and limitations that a person has. Those boundaries, if you think about it, are what I want. That's me, what I want. What I'm used to. And what I think. These are the boundaries, the Mitzrayim, of every single one of us. What I think, that's right. What I want is right. What my habit is, what my nature is, that's right. The Torah says, what's the mission of the Jew? Go out of Egypt. Lech lecho. Go out from your desires, go out from your nature, go out from your intellect. And Hashem said, where should you go? To the land I show you. 
What does this mean? To, to explain it like this. In the world, there's inanimate, plant, animal, and human. The purpose of everything in the world is to go up. Right? Everything, the purpose is to go up, not down. The purpose is to go up. What happens to the inanimate domain like water? Water waters a plant. Therefore, it becomes part of the growth of the plant. Therefore, what really happens, domain, the inanimate, is elevated to plant life. Plants are eaten by animals. So therefore the plant from plant life becomes elevated to animal life. If you're not vegetarian, mm. humans eat meat. What happens to the food we eat? It becomes blood and flesh. So what happens to animals? Animals become elevated to mankind. So everything went up. What about mineral? What? Mineral. Mineral. That's domain, inanimate. Yeah, but what they create, mineral. We, we, we use them, we eat them, we use them, we, whatever it is. When they're used to build a building of good things, then it's elevated also. I'm just thinking, okay. Now, the question, where do we go? We're the epitome of creation, unless we live in Beverly Hills, then dogs are the epitome of creation. But normal people are the epitome of creation. So the question is, where do we go? So the answer is, we go up to God. We become one with Hashem. So that's what Hashem says. Huh? So nice? Thank you. You agree with it? So Hashem says to every single... And therefore, like the Ramban is explaining, it doesn't matter if you're a tzaddik or not. Hashem is speaking to Avram, meaning to every single Jew. What is your, what's the, your mission in life? What is the purpose of your creation? To go out of your wills, desires, go out of your nature, go out of your intellect, and go to the, to the land that become one with God. That's what Hashem wants from all of us. What? But even that has different levels, right? Um, Correct. And the closer you get to Hashem, the further you are. Is, yes, and then He's watching itsy bits every moment, every action that you do. So. What do you want him to do? I don't know. No, if you're that close, I'm being serious. If you're that, after 120 years, if you're that close to Hashem, Hashem is not watching everything we do. You're at a different level, no? Yeah, you become a much, <laughs> much greater spiritual level. Where Hashem is watching Even as a human being, when you're a godly person, you're a much higher level. Let, 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 let's say this very simply. Um, a human being who's interested in eating and drinking and having a good time and sleeping, yeah? They are not only as bad as an animal, they are worse than an animal. Why? An animal is created an animal. That's what it is, and that's what it was created to do. Eat, sleep, and have a good time. People who are created with intellect to be greater and utilize to grow and in, in intellectual things, which is the uniqueness of a human, and a person, instead of doing that, uses to, to eat and to drink and have a good time, and that's all they're interested in, they're, they're not only as bad as an animal, they're worse than an animal. But, 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 well, like, you have even the Havdul, Goyim, even the, they don't have Torah mitzvahs, yeah? But Goyim that are into intellectual things in life, into education, into science, into, you know, intellectual things, are much more refined human beings than a guy that likes to have a good time. I mean, that's the fact. People don't, whether they like it or not. Even to have a human being, Jewish or not Jewish, doesn't matter. When the person is into intellectual things, they're into education, they're into math, science, some, you know, the biggest embarrassment to humanity is that the teachers, don't matter the secular world, yeah? Teachers that are educating and molding the life of the kids get paid less 
and not only less, a million times less than a guy who knows how to kick a ball or throw a ball or knows how to be a faker and an actor and actress who are low lives. Isn't that embarrassing to humanity? Just think about it. Okay, there's supply and demand. They bring in the money so they get paid. Very nice. But the bottom line, the world we live in today idolizes sports, actors, yeah, and all that type of stuff, rather than holding educators in high esteem. Teachers, if you think about it, teachers should be paid the big bucks, and the football players, and the basketball players, and the hockey players should be getting bupkis. That's the way it should be. If you talk about the moral compass, yeah, they'll tell you these guys bring in money, these guys don't bring in money, but the fact that human nature is like that around the world, you know, that people go crazy for a concert, yeah, and they won't go crazy for a lecture. I'm talking in the, in the secular world, yeah? You have a professor giving, going to give a lecture, or some rapper giving a rapper, yeah? Where's he going to, who's going to get the bigger crowd? Without any question. Why? It's a disgrace to humanity. So terrorist tells us that's not what the life of a Jew is supposed to be. Go from your nat- from your wills, from your nat- birthplace, your natures, and go to the land of God. Yeah, but the place that you, where you live, the place where you born, the parents that you're going to have, that you can structure your intellect from your thought, this is the will of Hashem. It Correct. you in this position or there. So it's like a... Become because He's not, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't mean he'll leave your parents' house. By the way, Hashem told Avram, leave Terech. Because Terech was an idol worshiper at the present. At the end of his life, he did Shuva, Terech. But until then, he was an idol worshiper. And in fact, one and of the reasons... Huh? And he became a Jew? No, but he did Shuva at the end. This Rashi said, the last Rashi, Mikan, uh, that he did Shuva. So what, what's interesting is, one of the reasons the commentaries say, why didn't God tell Avram Avinu where to go? Because he didn't want the Canaanites following him. He didn't want his father following him. According to the Medrash, Tanakh did follow Avram until he came to Choron, where we learned last week's Pasha, in Choron, and then Tanakh said, oh, this is where I want to be. And Avram kept going. Avram Avinu wouldn't be able to function with the evil of his father around, who was a, a major idol worshiper. But Hashem's telling every Jew, go out and move on, move up, move up and move, not down. Okay. V'etzchol l'goy gadol, I'll make you a great nation. And Rashi says like this, normally, when a person travels, not today, you know, you go on the first class, uh, years ago when you traveled by horse and buggy, three things became less. Less children, because you weren't stable, uh, less money and less name name recognition. Because when you're in one place, you, you're established, you have name recognition. So Hashem says to Avram I want you to go travel. So Hashem says to him, I want you to know, when you're traveling, all these three things that are negative are not going to happen. The first thing we said, you don't have that many kids. You're going to have a lot of kids. Then he says, I'm going to have less money. Hashem says, I'm going to give you a bracha for money. Avram became very wealthy. And the third thing, that my name is going to be nothing, and I'm going to make your name great. And Hashem says, and you will be a blessing. Now, the Gemara says an interesting thing. At the beginning of Shema Nasser, we say, Okay, Avraham, Okay, Yitzchak, Okay, Yaakov. Right? How do we conclude the bracha? Baruch Ato Hashem, Mogain Avraham. We don't say Mogain Avraham Yitzchak of Yaakov. We start off, Alokein Avraham, Alokein Yitzchak, Alokein Yaakov. Why don't we finish the bracha? Baruch Ato Hashem, Mogain Avraham Yitzchak of Yaakov. Why don't we? So the Gemara says it's based on this Pasuk. The Pasuk says like this. The Ash Chol Agai Godol, I'll make you a great nation, that's Alokein Avraham. I'll bless you, that's Eloke Yitzchak. That's Eloke Yaakov. But how am I going to end? You're going to be the bracha, you're going to be the ending of the bracha, Mogain Avraham. 
And we begin all three, but at the end of the bracha, Hashem says, you're going to be the end of the bracha. Why? Because he was the first one. What made Avraham Avinu unique? The fact that he was, came to the recognition of God on his own at an early age. That was his greatness. So God did not instill that within him? No. Or we don't know? He reached that on his own. That, that was his greatness. That's why he, Noach wasn't the first Jew, and Adam wasn't the first Jew, and Mr. Shalach, they were great. Hanayich, Mr. Shalach, they were great men. But they weren't the first Jew, because the first Jew had to come to the recognition of God on his own. Well, how, did, <coughs> how did Abraham come to recognize God when he, he came? Okay, so how did he come to do it? Avraham Avinu got up in the morning, when he was a little kid, yeah? And he says, Yes, Balabayas Labirazu. There has to be a boss. Okay. You, you see the building across the street? Not the Mercedes. You were the cell phone company building, yeah? Did you see somebody build it? No. no. Did somebody build it? Yes. Yeah. Are you sure somebody, would you put money down that somebody built it? Yes. Yeah. What, but you saw it? No. What? But, but what? If there's a building, somebody had to make it. Correct? So Avraham Avinu says, there's a world. Somebody had to make it. He didn't know who. So the Gemara, the Madras says, it was during the day. So he said, oh, look at that big guy in the sky, the sun. That must be the real God. Look how powerful he is. So the whole day Avraham Avinu worshipped the sun. That was my other question. One second. It came night. Sun checked out. So he said, well, that can't be a god if he's a temporary god. So then the moon came up. So he said, okay, this guy. And by process of elimination, this is what the Medrash says, Avraham Avinu came to the realization that there's a super being that's beyond comprehension and visibility and everything. There is this god that makes the world run. It didn't come by itself. It didn't fall down from wherever. Because even heaven was made. <laughs> so that's how Avraham Avinu realized on his own that there's a God in the world. And he realized it can't be stones, it can't be mountains, it can't be... Because these things were all made, and a God can can't be, be made. Either. Huh? can't be sold. So what is, what, is, what is Hashem? He's not a human. He's not a stone. He's not the... Uh, is, he, is it a soul? I mean, is, is he a soul? God is, is God. There were two chassidim who were friendly. So one chassid says to the other one, uh, can you please define God for me? So the other chassid opens his mouth, he wants to try to explain God. He smacks him in the face, friendly, and he says, the second you open up your mouth to explain what God is, it's already not God. God is not explainable. You want to, because whatever you can explain is limited. What it is, we don't know. But does he look like a human? No, he's a male white Ashkenazi. <laughs> what does he look like? You can't Google God and see a picture. It's not going to happen. Okay. Rashi says another thing. Why did... Hashem not tell Avraham Avinu right away where he's sending him to, because he sent him to the land of Canaan, right? Because Hashem wanted to speak to him more, and more, and more, every time show more love to Avraham Avinu, more love to Avraham Avinu. And that's what he... Okay, <coughs> then he said like this. I will bless... Uh, no. Vavarcha, I will bless, Hashem says, Those that bless you. Whoever blesses you, Hashem says to Avraham Avinu, I will bless them. Umekalecha, and those that curse you, or I will curse. Now, um, it's interesting that, that Ibn Ezra writes, Vavarcha mevarachecha is plural. 
Mevarachecha is plural. There's a yud there. And by Mekalecha is no yud, which is Lashin Yochid singular. So even as it says, what is Hashem saying? The ones that bless you are going to be a lot. The ones that curse you are going to be few. Few individuals. But really, it's going to be that way. Okay, now, Hashem says like this. Whoever blesses you, I will bless. Okay. Now, what's interesting, the Kayaka asked this question, by the way. Vavarcha, it says like this. I will bless those that bless you. And then Hashem says, and the ones that curse you, I will curse. It's not in sequence. If it says, I will bless those that bless you, then Hashem should have said, I will curse those that curse you. Correct? This follows in. I will bless those that bless you, and therefore it should say, I will curse those that curse you. Yeah? That's not what the passage says. The passage says, I will bless those that bless you, and the ones that curse you, I will curse. So either you should have said, those that bless you, I will bless, and those that curse you, I will curse. Or, I will bless those that bless you, I will curse those that curse you, but he's like in, in... Opposite order. Opposite order. By blessing, Hashem says, I will bless those that bless you. And by curse, Hashem says, those that curse you, I will curse. Why is the I coming afterwards? So the Kriyoki says a very beautiful thing. When somebody wants to come to do good... Hashem says, I will bless him even before he actually blesses you. I will bless the ones that are coming to bless you. In negativity, in curses, Hashem says, until they actually curse you, I will not punish them, though. If they actually curse you, then Hashem says, I'm going to curse them. And this is the difference between good and bad. In good, our sages teach us, that when you come to do good, Hashem already helps you and blesses you and gives you good. By evil, until you actually commit the evil, Hashem says, I'm not doing it. I will not punish you. And therefore, Hashem says, Tavram Avinu. Okay? I will love, basically what Hashem is saying like this, I will love your friends and I will hate your enemies. Or, another thing it says, um, it refers to the Kohanim. You know what Kohanim do, Birchat Kohanim? So it says the Jew, Kohanim bless the Jews. Who's going to bless the Kohanim? So it says, we say, V'samu Hashemi Abnei Yisrael, V'ani Avarachem, I will bless the Kohanim. So Hashem says, and that's what we mean, V'avarcha, Hashem says about the Kohanim, I will bless the Kohanim who bless you. Because they need the blessing too. So Hashem says, I will give them the blessing. And it's interesting, the Gemara has an expression, The blessing of Hashem, meaning when you bless somebody and that therefore Hashem blesses you, Hashem gives you a bigger bracha than you bless the person. This is what the Chazal teaches from this thing. Vavarchem evarachecha says, Teisvashe shokadosh baruchu merubal yikar, meaning, when Hashem blesses you, it's more than the person blessed you. So when a, a person gives you a bracha, Hashem blesses that person more than the bracha he gave you. Because Hashem gives more than humans give. So it's always good to bless people because then Hashem blesses you more than... <laughs> than what you would have gotten blessed. Shem loves when people do good, what can I tell you? Okay, then it says like this, And all the families of the earth shall bless themselves with you. What does that mean? 
How will people bless their children? Ah, you should be like Avram and his children. Which is the ultimate compliment. Right? That you should be like Avram and his children is the ultimate bracha. Or like it says, but Yisimcha lekim kefrayim v'michem menasha, Hashem should bless you to be like Ephraim and Menashe. That means that's the ultimate level of a bracha. I mean, here, not the Zarecha. That's later on. All the brachas of people that are going to bless with your name. It should be like Avram Avinu and this and that. Okay, so it says now like this. Avram went. Avram went. Like Hashem told him, meaning he didn't ask any question. Okay? Um, the Avram, and this is the difficult passage that we learned before. Ben Chamesh Vishana Vishiv Shana, he was 75 when he left Chodon. Even though by Bishbain Absalom it says he was 70, because it was 30 years before the birth of Yitzchak, whatever. Uh, and therefore, this took place after Bishman of Sodom, according to many opinions. So, after uh, that whole thing. Why? Because there's no chronolo- chronological order in Tatum. Now, um, now, Light went with him. He didn't take Light with him. Okay? Now, Light's father, remember, died. We learned Haran, after Avram Avinu was safe in the fire. So Haran was given the choice by Nimrod. You want to be like me or like him? So he said, he was safe. Okay, I'm also going to be safe. So he, Haran said, I'm going to be like Avram. He threw him into the fire. He got killed. So Avram took Light under his wing. Like Marche took Esther. Like Marche took Esther. So Avram took Light under his wing. In fact, there's a, Rashi says later in Lech Lecha, that Light and Avram look very, very similar. He said, Ki Anashim and Achim Anachim were brothers. Rashi says, Avram and Light look very similar. Well, they're an nef- uncle or nephew. And don't forget, there was no aging at this time. The first one to get old, Avram Zake and Baba Yama, Avram Avinu was the first one to ever get old. Nobody aged. So Light and, and Avram looked very similar. Wait, I thought it was uh, Yitzhak or Yaakov that you had. Yaakov is sick. Who got it? <coughs> I thought well, he was the first person who got old. No, it was Avram. It said, Avram Zakim Bayu Yaman. So the Gemara says, Ad Avram Lohaisa Zikna. So Avram, there was no such thing as aging. Why did Avram ask? It's his, it's his fault. He told God, me and Yitzchok look exactly alike. Nobody can tell who's the father, who's the son. So make me look like a father. So it's a Ramzak, I should made him old. Yaakov Avinu, like we said, how did people die? They sneezed and then the shaman came out, of, it went in through the nose, it went out through the nose. That's why you say, Gesundheit, it's a Gesund, whatever, yeah? But Yaakov Avinu wanted a warning before he died. He wanted to bless his children. So Yaakov Avinu said to God, give me a, a sign that I'm dying. So she made him sick. He told her Yaakov Avinu there's no illness in the world. I'm not going to say why. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking right now. But? First of all, he wanted it, and then millions of people have to suffer throughout generations. Who says it's suffering? There's people suffering. From aging? What's the alternative? The alternative? From being sick. What's the alternative? That's my other question. I'm sure there's an... I mean, it could have... uh, Okay, I don't want to get into this too much. Let me ask you a question. God does things that are good or bad? Good. Okay. Good. You better... Yeah. Okay, whatever God does is good... So when God makes people sick, it's good or bad? In the long run, it's good. Never tell me in the long run. God doesn't do good in the long run. God does good. Yeah? Now it's good. Okay. 
So if God is good, and therefore the nature of good is to do good, and therefore whatever Hashem does is good, therefore, ex good, therefore, uh, when a person is sick, is good. Okay. Now, the question is, in my eyes, it looks bad. But this lady didn't understand before. God doesn't have eyes. He sees things differently than we do. He doesn't have our eyes and our mouth and our understanding. Okay? Thank God he doesn't. And therefore he sees things his way and it's very good. Just because I don't see it doesn't make it wrong. Okay? Okay, so now the passing says like this. Ve'yikach Avram Sarah Ishtay. So Avram took Sarah, his wife. And the Zayar says, what does it mean he took his wife? You can't force it to go. You couldn't force it to go. But he took her, he persuaded her to come. Okay, and he told her, because um, you can't, there's a halacha, by the way, you're not allowed to force your wife to move to a different country without her consent. So therefore, Avram Avinu kept her. So he persuaded her to come. That's uh, light ben Achiv and light his nephew. That's called a chusham asher also becharon. Okay, that all the properties that they inherited that they amassed, and that's a nefesh asher also becharon. And all the souls they made in charon. Now, what souls did he make in Choron? So the Medjur says, Avram Avinu, he was the first Chabadnik, right? He went out to the world and spread Yiddishkeit. Avram Avinu made a lot of Gedim, not converts that we have today, you know, Allah Gedim. Avram Avinu, it says in the Medjur, Avram Megayer Anoshim, Sonim Megayer Hanoshim. Avram Avinu converted the men, Sarah converted the women. Which means, Avram Avinu brought a lot of people into believing in one God. And that's what it says, Sheikh Nisim Tachas Kanfei Heshchina, Rashi says. What did Avram Avinu, what souls did Avram Avinu bring? He converted them that they believed in one God. Sarah converted the women, and um, now, that's the deeper meaning. What's the simple meaning of the Pasuk Rashi says? What does it mean the souls that they had in Choran? Servants, slaves, maidservants, all the things that they bought. So whatever they had, they picked up and they moved. Which means, and this is part of Avram Avinu, by the way, passing the test. Because simply, if you think about it, Avram Avinu should have kept the stuff back in Choran, you know, in in, uh, in storage. And he would have got to test it out, you know, try it out, like normal people do. You just don't move to a new city. You don't even know where you're going and take everything with you, yeah? First, you go, check it out, and then you come back and take your stuff. Avram Avinu didn't believe in that. Hashem told him, go. What did Avram Avinu do? It? Did He took light, he took Sarah, he took his wife. He took everything that he had, and he went towards the land of Canaan. Okay? Now, everybody wanted to follow Avram Avinu. Now, what's interesting, Hashem didn't even tell him where to go yet. But, that even though Hashem didn't give him the final destination, okay, Avram Avinu understood this is the land I'm eventually going to get as inheritance. Remember, we don't know this already. That he's going to have inheritance in the land of Eretz So to, to Canaan. So he said, where am I going? God didn't tell me yet where to go. I'm going. Where am I going? Going in that direction. Then we'll see what Hashem tells me to do. So that's what it says. Everybody agreed with him. Um... So it's interesting. Some opinions, by the way, Sefer Yosha says, how many converts did Avram Avinu have? 72. Um, uh, 
Now, by the way, it's interesting. This whole Mephoshim ask, whatever happened to those converts? The Medrash asked, by the way, what happened to all those converts that Avram Avinu and Sarah made? So they say they never stayed. After Avram and Sarah died, it wasn't a real conversion. It was all through the influence of Avram and Sarah. When Avram and Sarah left or died, whatever it was, they didn't keep it. What, they went back to being... Uh, yeah. Time? yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah but even uh, uh, a convert, if he's go back after, he's still a Jew. Today. Not, but Not those days. Those days went, wasn't a conversion. It was they believed in God. I mean, he I mean, taught them how to believe in, that they have to believe in God. But that was it. There was no changing of uh, essence. And Today, if a guy converts halachically, and then they go back to become a guy, they're still a Jew. <laughs> Once you convert, you're there for all of it. So why do you say they always have to keep kosher and Shabbat? No, when they accept to become a convert, they have to. I mean, everybody has to be religious. Mm. But I'm saying, if they don't accept that at the time of conversion, it's worthless. Then the conversion is worthless. But if a person was serious at the time of conversion, at, you know, when he became a get, that they're going to keep mitzvahs and the Shabbos and kosher and mikveh and trillin and all, you know, all those mitzvahs, and they really meant it, and then later they go back, and all that bunch of people like that, the mom is firm, 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 and then they say one day that's it, it's over. Those people are still Jews. Halachically, they're still Jews. If a person had a, a quote, a Mickey Mouse conversion, not a proper conversion with acceptance of mitzvahs and, you know, Mila and Mikvah and all, then it was, ne- it was never a gaitis to begin with. There was another level of what was called in the in the in there was called Ger Teshev. Ger Teshev was not a Ger, like we know a Ger, a convert. Ger Teshev is, as the Gemara said, the Ramam brings down, that a Ger Teshev is a guy who accepted in Bezdin to keep the seven Noahite laws because God commanded Moshe and Har Sinai. He was called a Ger Teshev. He was given, he was a guy. He didn't become a Jew. What he did was he accepted the seven night laws in Bezdin, in the courts. But why did he do it? Like the Ramah says, not because it's the right thing to do, because God told Moshe Rabbein or Har Sinai that Goyim have to keep the seven night laws. If a guy wants to keep the seven night laws, why does he have to go to a Bezdin? That's what I'm saying, because then he had certain rights in that Yisrael that the regular guy didn't have. And he was what's called, by the way, the Ramam calls that Chassidi Umar Sa'ilam, the righteous Gentiles, that have a share in the world to come. The Christian doesn't keep a seven law for the... Huh? The Christian doesn't keep a seven law for Moshe. Yes, what do you mean, they're a guy? <laughs> yeah, but they still, they keep it, no? And if you, do they all keep seven night laws? No. No, if it was for Christian, no. <laughs> Do all Jews keep all mitzvahs? Not yet. Not yet. Mitzvah Shem, they will. But the ger, so but a real ger. So this gate, these gerim that Avraham Avinu made were basically just believing in one God. So that never permeated them in the extent that it lasted. Avraham Avinu's influence left, so left. But uh, ger teishev is a goy. But he accepts seven months. A real gad is proper gad, proper convert. Non Jews don't have a share in the world to come? Only if they, only, they have their own, uh, you know, but the Chassidei Umas Elam have a chelik in Olam Abba. Chassidei Umas Elam, which means the righteous non Jews, which the Ramam defines to mean a guy that accepted to do the seven mitzvahs in Bezin because God commanded Moshe Rabbeinu, they have a share in the world to come. In the Jewish Sholem Abba. Why would a non-Jew want to be in a Jewish Sholem Abba? Why would he want to be? Why wouldn't he want no, to I'm be? I'm being serious. Why would he? Why wouldn't he be? Why would he? Because there's a lot of... Uh, Friends. Good food there. It's bliss, it's bliss of God. 
There's a bliss of God who are revealed in that world. Listen, nowadays you have no one people's I dogs. Mean, okay, you know today when a person has a dog and the dog dies, you ask him where's the dog, they see it's in puppy heaven. So that's Ganadin for puppies. There's Ganadin for different, different, different things. I'm serious. Yeah, okay. Non-Jews who don't keep the seven noise laws, we, we don't know what, what happens to them. No one knows where they go. Right. We don't know if there's a concept of heaven, hell, purgatory. There is. There is. But the level of Ganadin, which is bliss of God, that they don't have. Now, the Chesidio Umas Elam have the same Ganadin we have? Not necessarily. So, Elam Abba, Ganadin, but the question is to what extent?